thank you so much everyone for joining us for uh, this conversation today about how to future proof your enterprise data. Uh, today we're going to have um, David Vasquez here who's the Director of Account Management and we also have uh, Dilkush Patel. He is our Director of Delivery and we're going to chit chat about all things data today. Um, David, why don't you start? How do you describe enterprise data estate management and you know what does that look like? Hey, Kate, thanks. Yes. Yeah, so um, let me qualify uh, myself a little bit here. So um, having implemented um, many data data warehouses in the past, one thing I've, I've learned is the term data warehouse can sometimes be misleading. Um, if you start with the premise that all that's required is a data repository and integrations, you're, you're probably going to miss the mark. Um, to me, enterprise data estate refers to the collection of data assets within an entire organization. It encompasses uh, all the data the enterprise owns. Uh, it encompasses um, the various departments, the systems and applications involved. Uh, this also includes structured data like uh, data that's coming in from databases, uh, Excel spreadsheets, unstructured data like documents, uh, images, videos, and, and even what we call semi-structured data, uh, which involves like XML or JSON files. So um, basically, to me, um, the most important part of this is managing the enterprise data state. So that involves managing the data governance, the data integration, the quality, the security, all of the above. So the definition is much broader in my perspective than just say a technology solution uh, to store and integrate data. Excellent. That definitely gives a, a nice overview, foundation to work off of. <laughs> uh, Dil Kush, what are some of the latest technology trends in enterprise data estate management worth noting? So uh, I think I'll just uh, expand on what our data said, right? Like it's not just about the data, so latest trend also uh, character around this need which is like data lineage management, data governance, who owns the data is where critical piece into this world. That you don't need to be in a situation where you keep buying data, some data again in any way to remove some data, management data, all those things. Data quality is very critical. You can implement the data warehouse, but if quality is not managed, that data warehouse will not be widely used down the line in maybe six months or in a couple of years. So managing the quality of data in the data warehouse is extremely critical. Cataloging all the data, what all assets you have, where, is, where are those assets present uh, and how to access those assets. Then master data management. As a company, the, we need to define, okay, what are the master data that we have? and how to basically make sure that we don't create duplicate versions of those. So all these things which are very basic are essentially the most trending topics in today's data asset, data world. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and David, you mentioned that you've implemented many enterprise data warehouses in your past. Is there one or two common lessons that you've learned from these deployments that you can share with our audience? Uh, yeah, so um, probably a lot more than a few lessons learned, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll focus on, I think, the top three. Uh, number one, never, never lose sight of the end data consumer. Now, granted, there are data projects that are system to system, uh, more for automation, but uh, with the assumption that we're talking about end consumers here, uh, never lose sight of them. I know it sounds simple, but we're talking about for example, in a life sciences industry, sales representatives, regional managers, business leaders, medical professionals, people that need the data um, uh, to provide you know, useful insights uh, that drive business behaviors. Sometimes, and, and this, this, in my experience, holds true for a lot of technology projects, sometimes it's really easy to get caught up in the latest technology, the trend, um, the processes, the project processes, or other details that may, may not be relevant to the outcome. And sometimes we overlook the details. I'll give you a very quick example, kind of a dumb example, but this, this goes years back when we were implementing a data solution and we checked off all the boxes. It was, um, the data was, was flawless, the, the, the reports were awesome, 
And during the project, we decided we were going to deploy a new technology at the time, some iPads. We were going to arm our reps with iPads. Um, at that time, again, the iPads weren't very useful in, in, in the corporate uh, sense. Uh, we deployed it and the adoption was terrible and, and, and it had nothing to do with the data, had nothing to do with the, the, the solution. It was that, you know, the users just didn't understand how to use that device. So it's a dumb example, but I just focus on, on the end user uh, that's using the data. The second one, and everybody knows this to plan the project, that, that's a given, right? But I don't think a lot of enough emphasis is spent on um, planning the deployment process. So, you know, fast forward, um, the data solution is built, you're about to deploy. Uh, plan that deployment process, the migration, generally what's called the smoke testing, uh, the integrations, the security measures. The reality is, especially when you're talking about enterprise solutions, you've got one shot. And when you deploy a system, uh, it's kind of a, a, a first impression. And if it doesn't work, uh, then you've got some fixing to do. So plan, thoroughly plan the deployment. The third one, um, is uh, there's always, and, and if I was asked to do a, a data project today, I, I wouldn't rush to go looking to uh, vendors just yet. There's always work to be done up front. Um, before data projects start, take inventory, right? You, you've got the people generally that understand the data. Uh, what What's in scope? What, what kind of data are we talking about? Who's the consumer, right? Who, who's this for? Uh, is the data reliable um, and, and does the data provide value? So I would say that before any project takes place, do an in-house inventory so that when the professionals do come in, you can clearly define what's available and what problems we're going to be solving. That's actually great advice. Really understanding where you are before you embark on that project, um, I think is applicable through a lot of business. Um, Dil Kush, in your experience as a lead data architect and developer, what are some of the common mistakes that technologists make when deploying, um, developing and deploying data solutions? And what would you advise to be done to remedy or avoid these common mistakes? So, in, not so surprisingly, most common issues do lie around the most important things, like right, what we talked about. So, uh, like having data assets, like having inventory of data assets. So most of the time that's not present. And what we end up with is data silos. It, each business unit end up buying their own data, end up creating their own version of data warehouse and company ends up with multiple data warehouses. And that how that will impact is each business unit will derive their own understanding of the data not having the common practices so one business unit might understand data in different way than the other business unit and we will not have a common uh, answer to single uh, problem then second thing is data governance we don't people don't know where the data is people don't know whom to ask for the access so where they end up with okay we don't have this data let's buy it, or let's get to the vendor and let them do the stuff so if the proper data governance is in place they can always go to some central uh, portal. They can look for the keywords of the data and they can look for, okay, we already have this data. This is the contact person for this data. Let's get in touch with them to understand what is already implemented and can we reuse them? So that will save lots of time on the company's front, lots of effort, lots of money uh, eventually. Uh, second thing is like people always try to go for either like, you know, we want to have cutting edge technology, what's the latest, but at the same time, we need to be aware, okay, is that thoroughly tested? Is this stable enough? Do we actually need that? No, most of the time, you should go for the technology which is tried and tested, which is maybe not at the cutting edge of it, but it's still relevant technology. And basically, you can get the answer out of it. Because sometimes what happens that if the technology is not tested enough, you start the implementation down the line halfway through, you realize, okay, now I'm having too many issues with the platform itself. And then team has to end up basically changing the technology stack completely, delaying the whole project. So uh, these are the small, small things. Uh, the, one of the most critical things is data quality. People, while implementing the data warehouse solution, people miss out on data quality uh, aspect of it. So there is nothing built uh, around the data quality monitoring. And what happens is once you implement, there is no measure of, okay, what's the quality of data? Are we having the correct insights? 
Now, eventually, this builds the mistrust in a data. And when there's a mistrust built in a data, people stop using those beautiful reports, those all the technology tools out of the box, like out of the window. So having a trust in data is very critical. And for that, having the monitoring data quality dashboards are extremely critical. So the small, small things which people don't I think think about while implementing data warehouse that comes back to bite you if they're not done in a right way. That makes a lot of sense. Making sure that it's built properly from the beginning will ultimately save you time, not only a short term, but also the long term. That That's great advice. Um, David, speaking of advice, do you have advice for any organizations about to embark on a data project? Yes, so I'm going to internalize that question um, as if somebody asked me right now to deploy a data project like this, and hopefully it's useful to others. The things that come top of mind that are quite often not missed, but not focused enough on. Number one is understanding the why. Sounds simple, but why are you doing this project? Um, what's the business case? Uh, and, not, and not a business case that just goes through jargon, but what's the real business case? What are you looking to get out of it? The second thing I would focus a lot on is have a well-established uh, executive sponsorship that's committed to the success, of not only the project, but the solution and its adoption. And let me, let me elaborate on that. Th there are ex um, project sponsors and there's executive sponsors. Here's the difference. The project sponsor uh, is focused generally on making sure that um, the, the project was delivered on time and on budget, right? The executive sponsor, and this is my own definition based on, on what I've done, is somebody that cares about the project after the project team has disbanded. Who cares, right? Who cares? The project team is done. Now I have to own and my team has to own and adopt the solution. That person has to be present because there is going to be a handoff. Especially when the project is a catalyst to enterprise change. What I mean, and I'll give an example. Um, I was doing a project again a few years back that encompassed uh, multiple global regions and each region was operating as somewhat of a, a separate business entity and they had their own rules. That realization that we were a catalyst for change was in one meeting where we realized and they were just trying to define, I forget what it was, a categorization of a prescriber. And, and it was a silly thing, you know, do you, so a prescriber that prescribes a lot versus a little, and it was, do we, do we classify them as A, B or whatever it was? It was a silly thing on the surface, but it, it, it stopped the project um, because uh, each leader, each project um, sponsor uh, wanted to look after their own pillar. But the reality is that, that these, these projects need to have the realization that they're driving change for the enterprise and tough decisions have to be made during that process. Hopefully those decisions are made before the project starts. The uh, third one, is to um, assemble a proper team and to ensure that each person understands what the commitment is in the role of the project. In a data project, don't, don't underestimate the importance of the data owners and the data stewards. Those really should be the people that are making the, the decisions. Again, those are the people that will stay after the project team disbands. They own the data. So they have a vested interest in making sure the projects go well. The last one is, is to test everything. Y yes, it, the common procedure, test the code, integration test, we, we all go through the motions. Uh, I'm proposing testing everything. The data steward process, ask yourself, when we start integrating data and there's an integration failure, what do we do? Who does it? Who do you call? How's it fixed? Training. Test the training. You, you've created these documents to train sales reps, for example. Run it by them. Does it make sense? Um, so I think all of this needs to be considered uh, before embarking on a data project. I love the idea that you 
have that ownership and buy-in from multiple different levels, not only the project, but also the executive, because I think that is so critical for the longevity of data projects. Um, Well, David, tell me what you're working on right now that solves these problems. So I'm working on a project. It's it's, uh, building or enhancing a product called Bird's Eye through P360. And I'm really passionate about it um, because of what I've gone through, right? Which I, I don't believe in today's day and age, companies should be spending a whole lot of time and effort in, in building, air quotes, um, a, a data solution or platform. Uh, it, it's been built. More effort should be spent customizing a solution to meet unique business challenges. Now, in the life science industry, that could be challenging because every industry has its uniqueness and when you buy data platforms it comes sort of off the shelf vanilla and you have to build on it what bird's eye has done is it's built we built an an enterprise data estate solution that's designed developed and tested for life sciences in the industry we found that off the shelf and this is the goal uh, bird's eye would accommodate a vast majority of the requirements Uh, including the life sciences, the data model is life sciences specific, the pipelines, the integrations. Uh, Let's face it, we know who the data providers are, the big data providers, right? Um, That provides HCP data, prescription data, inventory data. Of course, there's a lot of them out there we haven't accounted for, but the big ones we've accounted for in this tool already. Even down to the reports and analytics, right? We've done this enough to know what what reports and analytics works. Is that really that part of the project should come down to really what it looks like, maybe add a few more details, but you shouldn't really have to spend a lot more time on designing it. The other thing Bird's Eye offer, which is really exciting, is a number of machine learning models. So these are algorithms that are incorporated uh, into our advanced uh, and predictive analytics. So, and we, we give this to our customers and they can modify it. So, you know, what rules do you need, you know, um to predict a a potential outcome and these are pre-built models um, that are ready for the customer but simply put uh you know bird's eye is meant so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel companies should focus their attention on the why um, and how the data has to work to support their their build their business uh not on building solutions from scratch Um, so that to me that well that's the project i'm working on right now very interesting. Uh, Dilkush, can you tell us a little bit about the technology that's behind Bird's Eye? Uh, sure, definitely. So I think the what you said, right, not reinventing the wheel, giving as much as possible out of the box so the solution is ready as we implement it. That's the critical piece. And we are completely Microsoft shop, so most of our solution revolve around Microsoft technology. For Bird CI, we specifically for uh, uh, making sure that we have all the integration ready. We have we have used the Microsoft uh, Azure Synapse. We have created pipelines uh, for all the data pipelines for majority of the vendors available in a healthcare space. So whoever uh, the particular com- uh, uh, healthcare company is dealing with, we can just plug in our integration and get the data from those vendors. Then we have taken care of data lineage, data quality, data governance, data catalog. And for that, we use uh, Azure uh, Purview. So Purview gives most of the things in build. We have to make sure that we put in proper governance model. Uh, we just make sure our lineage is as expected and whatever fine tuning need to be done, that's done. Uh, in terms of reporting, now we, as we said, the the consumers are, what consumers want to see is the end goal. And for that, we cannot just give them Excel spreadsheet. We need to have the proper reporting built. So that for that, uh, we have built the whole reporting suite in Power BI uh, and all the supports are very much solving, I would say, I would maybe 80 to 90 percent of the use case and then more customization as needed are easy to done on those reports. We also have a data quality dashboards built, which basically gives a high level of what's the uh, health of your data. Uh, it also shows over the time and current state. So because for healthcare industry, there are certain data points which are very critical like 
if your doctor doesn't have proper NPA numbers, that data is not trustworthy. So we do lots of checks to make sure data is in proper state. And if there is not in proper state, we report on okay how much percentage of your data is not in good state, and what is that data to be specific, so that it gives actionable insight on the data. So uh, and we also use uh, data bricks to process our uh, data because most of this data is in large chunk. And the most traditional technologies might not be the right technologies to work with this data. So we have a DataBricks which processes all the our large data sets and then results into final dimension fact kind of a model which is used in this reporting module. So yeah, that's a high level overview of what we have. Excellent. Well, yeah, thank you for that insight there. Um, this has been a very interesting conversation. Um, I think I want to open it up to any Q&A uh, that the, anybody might have. Um, I know before we um, started the recording, we did have one question just about the time rollout of a data project. Um, obviously, there's going to be a ton of variables for this, but is this something that could be stood up within six months for a company that's a thousand people? Or is it something that's, you know, more of a two year project? Like what, what are the variables that people have to consider? Is that a question for me, Kate, or for Sure, Brooklyn? sure. Don't, uh, David, go ahead. Yeah, so I think it, it, it definitely depends on the scale and size, but that timeline can be dramatically reduced if you're not considering rebuilding from scratch. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking, you know, in, in a magnitude of, of double or triple the amount of time. So two things to consider. I, I'm not going to give a timeline because it really it, it varies. It depends on the size of it. But if timeline is an, is an issue, Two things to consider. Number one, did you put the work in in advance to take inventory, understand the why, understand what data you have available out there? And number two, are, are you are you purchasing a solution that's quote unquote pre-built? Because then you can focus on the real benefits and value of, of what it is you're trying to achieve. Excellent. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and then Dilkush, you had mentioned um, previously about the uh, reporting that has been built on Power BI. Can you explain that a little bit yep. further? Like what analytics can be pulled from that or what um, what what type of information we can use that for? So I think some of the common use case scenarios that we see in the normal healthcare uh, industry, right? So how many uh, What's your prescription volume? How it has grown over the time? What's your prescription volume growth year over year, quarter over quarter, month over month? Then when you look at your alignments, uh, when the alignment changes happen, what's your gain and loss for a particular territory? Because for some of the sales, most of the sales rep, it would be very important to know how much more doctors they are gaining, how many doctors they are losing, and what's the impact on their territory in terms of volume that they are going to get. For a certain doctor, uh, they can even look at the call history of a uh, on a doctor. So when they're going in any meeting, they know okay, for uh, in last maybe last three months, how many times a particular doctor was called on, what's the outcome, how much this doctor has written in last three months, has it that volume grown over a uh, previous period? So what all uh, I think whatever we could think of in terms of most common use case that a particular sales rep would need or even the home office users the business owners would need from this prescription data which will help them in their business growth is what we are giving already built and we have already built those analytics model and the uh, reporting suite based on those outcome of those analytics models that makes a lot of sense um, and if anyone has any additional questions and they wanted to type them into the chat, we can, of course, um, follow up with you after this call. But um, before we hop off and wrap up this conversation about how to future proof your enterprise data estates, um, David and Dilkush, do you guys just want to take a moment and give some closing words? Yeah, I would. Um, I think it's just a summary of what I what I had said before. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to take on um, a data project of, of a significant magnitude. Um, look at the professionals. Look, look at something where you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, this technology has been around for a long time. 
Um, but, but do focus on the small things that we overlook. And I went through a lot of them in our discussion. They're really important. Um, having the executive sponsorship, understanding the why, keeping a focus on the end data consumer. Those are really important things. Uh, usually everything else is covered. Um, you know, the technology itself, you know, the professionals are going to do that, but focus on the small things. And always ask, like, ask most critical question in the start of the project and not so that you don't have to answer them at the end of the project. Why you are doing that, how you are planning to do that, and what's the outcome that you are expecting. Right? Choose the technology which works for you, not that you don't want to hire thousands of people just to implement one data warehouse. So make sure the technology is something that you can support, technology is something you can work with. Those are two both great pieces of advice. Uh, I want to thank you so much again for your time, Dale Kush and David. Um, I really appreciate this discussion around future proof proofing your enterprise data state. And uh, I hope we can have another discussion in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.